everybody, and welcome to an impersonal Wild Ride with Steve-O. I say that because Adam Ray's impersonation of Dr. Phil is just about the funniest thing ever. I mean, we're howling on this episode. Jeez. And uh, Adam Ray's a good buddy of mine. I've known him forever. He's always been a huge supporter of my comedy, and, and uh, he's just always cracked me up. He's a super talented guy. And... Um, Man, when he starts in with the Dr. Phil stuff, the whole second half of this episode is probably the most laughter that we've ever had on the Wild Ride podcast. So this one's a treat. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Adam Ray. Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. Freeze frame. Can we freeze on me? Can we do like an 80s freeze? We arrived. <laughs> so, dude, you uh, are just like going crazy as Dr. Phil. Yeah. Any cease and desists yet? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. No, but I have gotten a uh, um, a friendly DM from his son. Oh, wow. A reaching friendly. out. Yeah. Being like, Yo, what up, man? At first it was, hey, this is uh, Phil's son. Let's get you and my pops together. Oh, rad. No smiley face, though. No LOL. Yeah. And I was just like, fuck, dude, here comes the lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no letting me know that, like, hey, what I think of what you're doing is A-OK. -okay. Right, so right, right, right. I, and just, I've never been left on scene from a grown adult man for over 24 hours. I don't recommend uh, it. Oh, dude, I have. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. Well, maybe and, from and some, like, well, maybe the stakes were higher because I was yeah, like, okay. I want the full fill approval. The, I want the McGraw, hee ha, hoorah, whatever yeah. it is. I want the whole Phil family to go. Dude, keep on being my dad. So then we he gets back a a, a bit later and uh, I was like, yeah, dude, hilarious. Let's get you and my pops on your show, stat, which I think would blow up the internet. Didn't you get uh, or didn't Tony Hinchcliffe get uh, like a video? Yes, recording from Dr. so Kill Phil. Tony. They gave me guest of the year. Yeah, um, oh, at Kill wow, Tony. Yeah, dude. I guess it's they live streamed it and um, I think those episodes drop uh, next week whenever this comes. The week of the last week of January. And yeah, I went on the, they had two shows at this arena in Austin. The were first you at one, the arena? Yes. Oh, uh, dude, Andy, you were guest of the year. Andy, you were on the arena? Bro, it was the craziest two days other than my circumcision and walking to my mom, uh, blowing my stepdad. This was like, <laughs> this was awesome. And I'm on, I go on as a guest for the first night. And people go fucking nuts. Because I went on Kill Tony as Phil over uh, the summer. And it was just bangers couple mil in like two days the fan yeah, i'd been on a bunch of myself which is fun and then i was like tony i'm starting to do this like phil thing i did a live show with burr at the comedy store i think his character's conducive to giving dude, advice dude you did with uh adam adam divine yes and, and Durs, santino and bobby like, yeah santino and, and bobby Rife, like yeah. i mean dude like just said whitney and uh and nikki uh glazer uh whitney cummings uh we'll have to have you come through whenever you want yeah um, i mean I, I was with your other character yeah jeremy yeah yeah. yeah, you were perfect. I mean, you just, but it, it needs people like that that are down to play. You know what I'm saying? Because doing the character, it's still me through all the bullshit. Dude. But, but it's still, and so with, with Kill Tony, it popped off. And then we did the arena and I went out and, and at the end of it, Tony's like, I got a surprise for you, Phil, if you want to look that way. And then I look up and it's a message and he's like, uh, hey guys, uh, Dr. Phil here. I wish I could be uh, in Austin with you, but I'm eating an apple. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> just like right out of the gate, <laughs> hilarious. And he's like, I want to congratulate uh, Kill Tony on a successful New Year's show and Adam Ray for guest of the year as Dr. Phil. Wait, what? <laughs> and he goes, I I've never, uh, congrats Adam on, on uh, figuring out how to finally be successful, pretending to be me. <laughs> Gets a big laugh. And so that's how I find that I get it, which is also a stamp of approval from him. And uh, and then I went out the next night and just did like a surprise stand-up set. But like, the people went fucking nuts, dude. I've never had, I mean, 10,000 people, I posted on my Instagram walking out, like for just, it's just wild, man. And it's, I'm at this point in, in life and the career where it's like, I chalk up everything for the experience, never expect anything to go, this is it. You know, this is the thing that takes, so it's like, Super fucking fun. Everything has its, you know, time in the sun. But, like, uh, it's just cool that, like, I enjoy it and think it's funny and fun. And mm -hmm. that people just want to, I mean, you've experienced that a myriad of times, right? It's like when you're like, oh, this is fun for me and people enjoy it. 
double win, dude, right? Sure. Um, yeah, but but so that's led to just doing it a bunch. And I did it on Taste Buds a little bit with um, Sal and Joe. Just I was doing like a, a God mic interviewing people throughout the uh, podcast. And people really dug that. So, um, did you bring the uh, Dr. Phil outfit? I didn't. Well, it's a makeup artist. She was uh, on SNL for like ten years, and then Mad TV, the original. And I met her on the CW Mad TV reboot that that uh, they did for a year. And because uh, CW is where you go for comedy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that that got canceled. But I met this makeup artist that was a gangster, and so she started doing it for me. And uh, so uh, next, next, maybe next cruise, you know. And dude, you're like. You're just so wildly like fast and and funny. Like mm -hmm. I remember like when when you had the other character. Yeah, yeah. And we and we were riffing. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, you were killing me, dude. Oh, I was thanks. I was like, bro, dude, you're just talented, man. I love thanks, it. Brother. Um, yeah, getting you to break is. But I mean, you guys probably know that. But it's like there's certain people that have like special laughs that when you get them to like my father-in-law's got one. Josh Wolf, great comic, has one. Like you definitely like when you get you to laugh, like true, genuine, guttural belly laugh. Like it's like it was game over, dude. You know. Dude, we've been doing that a lot on this cruise, man. We have been laughing so <laughs> hard that we've been like getting abs under all this new fat. Let's go. Have you been eating a lot too on this cruise? Late night. During the day, not as much, and so it's going back to like old school comedy club for me, where it's like I'm I'm drinking. Thankfully, the last two nights, last night actually, maybe didn't and woke up starving because I was too fucked up. But usually, it's like <laughs> home and the room service. It's just too accessible. I'm like I star six nine or whatever I dialed, and the guy just showed up and he's like French fries, pizza, and I was like. I think I ordered a fucking Oreo McFlurry, but I'll take that, you know, because <laughs> it seems like Mickey D's is a little out of your reach. But yeah, they're just on it with the food, so it's. It's tough to not pack on some. Pounds. Yeah, I haven't been starving on this trip once. Bro, yeah. that buffet, the garden, uh, yeah. seven. it's crazy. The guy you walk in is like happy, 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 happy washy, happy. washy, washy. <laughs> He's the best. Smiley, smiley, away, smiley, smiley. Stay yeah. away, spray <laughs> away. Jerky, jerky, jerky. He did it a couple of times. <laughs> stay <laughs> away. Stay <laughs> away. <laughs> 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 spray did like. You uh, that? <laughs> yeah, and what else did he say? He's like, spray you, spray <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, he gave me this the other day. He goes, hey, I just met you, but this is crazy. Here's my number and spray me, maybe. He didn't do that. I just that up but yeah, good. he <laughs> is versatile and yeah. we don't even know I, if it's sanitizer no, and no. he's just spraying us with fucking the guy who's, who's just spraying hands the, like for him to have banger zingers is zingers, just dude. like it's epic you can tell he's a guy that that everyone appreciates on the ship so how did you come to be on the impractical jokers eric andre cruise so I matched with uh, Murr on Grinder like two weeks ago, <laughs> and we, <laughs> yeah. No, I met Sal in Austin at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival, and I was like, man, big fan. And then he's like, oh, I've been watching some of your shit, and uh, and we just hit. You know, they're all such cool guys. It takes a very uh, a minimal amount of info, I feel like, for dudes to like hit it off. It's like I don't know. Usually for me, it's comedy, sports. You know, Nickelback or Creed, fucking Zima or Bud Light. Like, you just kind of, you know, and then, <clears throat> and are you know, you're not a fucking rapist. You're not a, a piece of shit. Cool. I feel like we can, you know, hang out past this. But Sal was just so nice. And then he came to L.A. We we kicked it a few times, then uh, podcasted, and then uh, we're in certain cities. And then he said, come do some dates with us. And then I got to know the rest of the guys. And then, uh, yeah, fast friends. But, but this is the first cruise. I'd yeah. never been on a Joker's cruise. I've been on yeah. two... Uh, a buddy of mine's in the New Kids on the Block. Uh, his name's Joey McIntyre. So I went on two New Kids on the Block concert cruises. Wow. Very different than this. This is loosey-goosey comedy. That was 3,000 drunk, crazy yeah. fans of a boy band, um, which is still fun in its own ways. But um, uh, I, I heard years ago that 311 had a cruise. Yeah. I think and yeah. I'm guessing do. it's the same company. Wow. Oh, Sugar Ray had a cruise, I think. Dude, she just so must have been just slamming every guest. I mean, Mark Epstein McGrath. Epstein had a cruise. Epstein had a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's not on it, but I think it's still going. <laughs> but it's, on a, it's not out of the States. Yeah, it's, right. yeah. um, Can you imagine? Dude. What if that guy just tried to branch out? Like, so oblivious. He's just, Even when he was guilty, he's just like, fuck it, dude. This is when the brand is at its Reinvents peak. himself. Reinvents yeah. himself for the cruise. Like OJ. <laughs> if imagine if OJ had a cruise, that'd be sick. OJ's, the fact that OJ will pop up and just be like, what's up, Twitter world? Hey, I'm at Costco right now. You never know when you're going to need some potato salad, right? And you're like, 
All right, man. Yeah, well, he had a book that came out that said, what was the title of it? Uh, like, if, if I, I did, did it. it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so funny, by the way. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> if I did it, just not even wanting to, like, go completely the opposite direction. He's like, look, I know what you're all thinking. <laughs> it's just been called probably dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> so good. You ever see that interview? Like, he was walking down Venice Beach and giving an interview with some lady and some girl walks up to him. She's like, hi, nice to meet you. I've never wanted to shake hands with a murderer before. <laughs> oh. And, like, and, and he just... Nice to meet you. Kept walking. Yeah. The girl was like, does this happen all the time? He's like, yep, all the time. Yeah. You just imagine he that shit. He should convince himself that, I mean, who knows what happened. I mean, dude, we can go down the rabbit hole totally. on, on OJ, but like the... There's an argument to be made that OJ directed Two Girls, One Cup. Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> that's not real. We'll cut this out. But <laughs> re reinvented but <laughs> himself. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's not a far cry because they had like, simultaneously, there was this... Um, like scripted, like actors all played Cuba Gooding Jr. played oh, yeah. uh, OJ. Oh, and yeah. like they told the story yeah. as like scripted acting. And simultaneously, there was a five part ESPN documentary series about yes. o OJ. Yes. And like in, in the like, in, in the five part documentary series, they just got right into like this whole post. And he was just like, oh, well, whatever. You know, he's just this, like, in that, he's a very sleazy behaving guy. Oh, yeah. And it, like, it's just really intense. Let me go on the record right here and tell you that it is very important to me to not be a sleaze bag. And I'm very careful to not be a sleaze bag by maintaining the integrity in my relationship, my faithfulness to my lady, and by making sure that our intimacy is at the level that it needs to be. And candidly, sometimes that means chewing on a blue chew. That's how it works, man. I chew on the delicious blue chew tablet, swallow it, half an hour later, I am ready to rock. Why? Because blue chew tablets have the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis, except they're chewable, delicious, and they only cost a fraction of the price. But for you, they cost nothing, potentially. If you go to bluechew.com, use the promo code Stevo, consult with the medical provider right there on the website, and then boom. You've got your prescription dialed in, and you get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. And if you've heard these, these plugs in the past and thought, hmm, maybe, maybe it is time to try it. Why? Because I have a blast every time I do, and I think that you might as well. So, one more time, go to bluechew.com and use the promo code STEVO to get your entire month's supply of Bluetooth tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. Now, let's get back to it. It seems like, yeah, he, he was so, I mean, I, don't, I wasn't old enough to really follow how famous he was, but it's like, I've even heard things from people nowadays that were like family friends or like hung out at the same restaurant and just, just will say like, Passerby are like, you know, yeah, dude, I used to see him like in there with his like with the wife and like they he was just always angry, you know, so they just had that yeah. to go off of. So then they're like, he did it because I saw that. And then another guy's like, dude, I once saw him like fucking, you know, he had to like butter his toast, but he asked for a steak knife. That means he did it. You're like, so that's, <laughs> a, that's a jump to get. Like, he loved big right. kill, killing machine butter knives. You well, know? Dude, I remember being in, in like junior high <laughs> and we had to watch the trial, like the verdict yeah, me too. On, TV on TV in LA because they were worried about riots. So we're the, uh, the whole school was watching them because they were getting ready to either shut down or, or, or keep it open. I mean, wow, dude. What's the, what? All right, yeah, I'm not letting OJ hijack this conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so we're on this ship, and, like, it's, it's, it's a pretty cush gig, dude. Bro. It's so much fun. Where does it rank for you as far as the fun, uh, the fun times? I mean, as far as, like, rad jobs yeah. that, like, you're stoked to do, I mean, I can't think of anything. Well, you're not schlepping around shit from city to city. You right, just, I mean, easy work. I mean, here's the thing: it's like a, a, as a business model, it, it's like the comedy club model on steroids. Yeah, because if you think about it, like the 
like the pay that goes to talent is basically like the door and then like the the, the business operates on like food and beverage yeah. granted all the food is free but you've just got so much drinking going on they're just racking up like they're just like people don't even understand what they're spending yeah so it's kind of like food and beverage goes to the to the the ship or whatever the business yes. and like the the door fee goes kind of give or take but it's like such a rad thing and I'm like oh my god last two times I saw Jeff Tremaine he's like man I've heard about people really killing it on cruise ships man I'm thinking about a jackass cruise and like simultaneously wow simultaneously I've I go had, on that heartbeat oh my god who wouldn't but the problem is that like they, they like you know they they really think man maybe that's not a good idea as far as like liability goes so, so, so. yeah well yeah because you think about the people that come on like this cruise there's no I haven't seen any people maybe trying to pull like you know, practical jokes on people. But yeah, a jackass cruise would, you'd have your fill of people. Be like, they, they, I mean, they, it, they the medical be bill would be high. There would be potential. There would be potential. So I think six man would be too scared yeah. to do that. But like the fact that I got to be here for this, yeah. like, I mean, I kind of knew before I got here, like, wow, like, don't blow this. You know, don't blow this. Like, I want to have, like, a good relationship with yeah. this company. Like, I want to, like, kind of go above and beyond. I want to, like, deliver really well. I want to be professional. I want them to like me because I want to keep coming back on the cruise ships, like, because it's so much fun. And I was doing great. I was doing great. Oh, no. Wait a second. What are we? <laughs> I have an idea what you're starting to like, I, head towards. I, I, but I was, I, was, I was killing it. I was killing it. Like, you have been every, killing it. Yeah, every time I got an opportunity, like, I express my gratitude. You know, I put You stopped for every fan photo I've seen, which yeah. is very kind, but that's well, who you are. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I put together an hour long show yep. and like, and you were there. It meant Phenomenal. The world to me. Yeah, man. Meant the world. Really feel good about that. And then I'm down to my last thing. I had told them like anything that you want me to do. My answer is automatically. Yes. hundred percent. You told them that. Yeah. 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 So they, they suggested, how about if I host uh, a truth or dare truth or dare. And so I get up there and I'm like, all right, we've got like a crazy turnout, the whole atrium, both levels, like shoulder to shoulder, like as many people as you can yeah. possibly squeeze in there. Yeah. And, I, and I told the crowd, I said, look, man, I'm not the kind of guy who uh, is willing to waste your time, you know, so we're going to limit the bullshit and we're going to keep it moving. Yeah. So let and me just show you a quick PowerPoint of why <laughs> OJ didn't do it. Yeah. And they're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> right. And so... Like they had like the, you know, the, their list of like truths and dares. And I was just like, all right, we're just going to go off script here, you know? And uh, what the people want. Wait, real quick. What were the ship's dares that they provided? What? Go to the some, buffet for a fourth time. Like, <laughs> I mean, uh, that people know. Was something no, that you almost and, got and, caught and, like, doing. Look, I'm not, I'm not gonna, the dares the, were rad. The dares, yes. were rad. The dares were actually like crazier than I would do because it was like with my my super, super hot, hot sauce. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna like smother slight pieces of cake and, and butthole destroyer hot sauce and make people eat the whole thing. It's like, I have them down this and that, hot sauce this, hot sauce that. And I was like, uh, I was like, wow, you know, I said, you know what, tell them that that's great. I sign off on all of it. But make sure that each participant like signs like a major waiver, you know, because I want them to think that I'm like super yeah. dot eyes cross T's, very yes. professional, no liability. Got to be. But then we're in the moment, and I'm like, okay, we're just gonna like. Boy, how many times have you heard a performer say, "Hey, when you're in the moment, man"? I mean, <laughs> think about the amount of porn stars who are like, "I was told to pull out, but hey, man, it was in the moment." You know? I mean, so in the moment is a tough place to live, but a great place to watch from. Right. So like this, this, uh, and then I tell the crowd, I'm like, Hey, look, if, if you get, if you get a truth and you got something better, then just give us what's better. Yeah. And that makes uh, it interactive too. People love yeah. that. If you can, if you can up the game, then, yes. then up the game. And, um, th this, this girl goes, I, she goes, I, I, I got a good one. And I'm like, hallelujah. <laughs> she says, I was on a different cruise last July. And I got engaged. She holds up her ring finger. Everyone's cheering. Touch of the heartstrings. So, so this is my new fiance. Push points to him. He's right there, stage right, like right by the by the stage. And she says, like a couple hours before we got engaged, we were in our cabin doing the dirty, and like he, you know we were doing it aggressively. And he fell out, and then rammed it back in. But he rammed it back in the wrong hole. So. I kind of freaked out, like, uh, 
You know, I, I, I just for the just for the viewers watch. We're talking about the butt. It went to yeah, the butt, right? Yeah, yeah. He didn't slip, fall, and she was like, and that was the first time I got ear fucked, right? Yeah, no, 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 okay. no. to the butt. So, right. So, so she freaks out. She says she runs to the bathroom where she's so shocked by what had happened. She actually passes out, loses consciousness, falls and hits her head, um, and and has this like crazy like gnarly bump on her head and it just so happens that like an hour or so maybe a couple of hours later homeboy gets on his knee and like asks her to marry him she's like yes i'll marry you so she says every single one of my engagement photos i've got this like obscenely like obscene oh lump this on my head. Cyst. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> great and, band name by the way yeah and i'm like you got like can you say on YouTube, like, sodomized into marriage? <laughs> you know, you can. like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, was just, I was just thought, wow, that's so great. And I said, you know what? Um, like, we need to get your fiance up here. Now I'm just kind of riffing. Okay. I get the fiance up here. Yeah. And I say, hey, I'm going to tell you straight up. If there's anything I don't approve of, it's non consensual <laughs> sodomy, buddy. And so, <laughs> what are we going to do with you? <laughs> and like, all the challenges are about hot sauces. So, I say, hey, there's kids in the audience. So, I just need you to face the audience. Only pull down the back of your pants. Okay, don't show the kids no, anything. Nobody needs that. They were keeping this clean. Yeah. Again, his, 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 uh, his wife to be. And I say, all right, now I need you to give me a finger. She puts out a finger. I said, make that too. <laughs> so she puts out two fingers and I pour hot sauce all over her fingers and I said I you know I think you know what to do. I'll be back here to make sure it's legit. <laughs> and she gives him like a fully aggressive, full on prostate exam, like with right the, there on the sauce. spot, yeah, and uh, I, I got I got right in the mix. I, 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 you know, like a referee. I made sure that we could move the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> yeah. Oh my! The, the roof got blown off, right? I mean, I don't know about the roof got blown okay. off. It was more people mm. like uh, Yeah, it was more like kind Kid, of like kids were running <laughs> <laughs> out of yeah. the theater. Uh huh. And what I didn't know is that the the people from the company that operates this vessel <laughs> uh, thought that that was getting a little bit, but but I was only getting started. <laughs> oh, this is the appetizer. Yeah, yeah. This was this was the opening act. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the next guy asked him when's the last time he peed the bed. It just came to mind, and, and uh, he he said he was sixty one years old, and that uh, it has been quite a while. He said probably about a year since, since he peed the bed. Okay. Yeah, because he's a drinker and he yeah. drinks too much and he pees in the bed. But the so thing is, effect. he's married. His wife is in the front row. Like right in front of the stage. And I asked her, did he pee on you in the bed? She says multiple times. Now, was he sleeping or did he just stand up and pee on her Pass, face? Pass, no, no, I, I have a buddy who did that while sleeping. <laughs> And steadied himself by putting his hand on the ceiling and just peed down on her. He says, one of those sleep peers that gets up and walks <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, this guy is just, he's sleeping in bed, pees the bed. Got comfy. And, and pees on his wife, which I think is, is also something that I don't tolerate. No, not a fan. Yeah, so the obvious question is, what are we going to do with you? <laughs> Wait, I'm like, hold on to this, basically. <laughs> You didn't yeah, tell me this. I, what are we going to do with you? I said, I said, I need you to be very careful. There are children in the audience. I only need you to pull the, the belt of uh, the waistline of your pants out <laughs> forward, not down. Just pull mm. it out forward. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he had like uh, some like Speedo kind of shorts on underneath. And I unscrewed the cap on a bottle of hot sauce. Let me tell you about the guy in that story whose wife's fingers I poured the hot sauce onto. That guy would have really, really loved it if he could have used a bidet from Hello Tushy after that show. I'm just saying, because nothing cleans off your pooper better than a bidet from Hello Tushy. I've said this a million times. Hello Tushy is my favorite sponsor of the Wild Ride podcast because I love their products, man. Their bidet, it's just power washes your butthole after you take a dump it saves the environment because you use way less toilet paper makes your butthole way cleaner because toilet paper just smears poop around and it leaves you feeling so fresh and so clean and it's the ultimate experience that's why hello tissue is my favorite and if you don't have this then 
I think it's going to be your favorite as soon as you try it. And the way to do this, you go to hellotushy.com. That's hellotushy.com and use the promo code Stevo to get 10% off your order. Again, I stand by this product. It is my favorite product I've ever promoted on the Wild Ride podcast. And that is because it's the best. So one more time, go to hellotushy.com and use the promo code Stevo to get 10% off your order and have a clean butthole for the rest of your life. That's H-E-L-L-O-T-U-S-H-Y.com. Hellotushy.com and use the promo code Stevo to get 10% off your order. Let's get back to it. And I just poured it all over his wiener, and then I actually, like, really banged it into his wiener just to make sure that it was good and covered. And uh, and then I said, I forgive you. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. What a great ending. Right, but I don't know that, like, I don't think that was actually a hit with uh, Six Man, but it was not the deal breaker. That was not the... <laughs> was, There's more? Yeah, it got a lot worse than that because there was uh, this... The, and then the next thing, you know, we got this girl. She looks kind of young. And then I said, how old are you? She says, 21. She says, I'll go get my idea. It's all right. Like, I, I, I don't even know what to do with this. But she goes, that's my 40-year-old boyfriend over there. Yikes. That's an age gap. Yeah. I'm not sure if I feel really good about that. So we're going to have to talk to this guy. He <laughs> said, get this 40-year-old creep up here. He walks on the stage. And I'm like, you know what, dude? You know, you look like you were on to catch a predator. <laughs> you look like the guy who walked in there with the bath towel wrapped around him, bopping around. Chris Hansen pops out. You got nothing to say for yourself. And I'll tell you what we're going to do with you, buddy. You're going you're gonna to stand with your back to the stage. Don't show the kids anything. And, and this 21-year-old girl, I said, you're going to get over here. You're going to assume the position, okay? Has his wiener been in your mouth? Before, <laughs> at this point, the, the company people. <laughs> hey, we're going to change our no, name from 6th man to 7th man because we don't want any bad press. Yeah, because I'm only going to get this girl to, like, literally fill her mouth with hot sauce and then stuff this guy's wiener into it. Sure. Because, hey. As you do. He needs to pay. Yeah, yeah. So this is on him. Yeah, yeah, no, he that's what I that's what said. Hey, said, this cannot. Yeah. This cannot. <laughs> and I was like, I put it together in the moment. I was like. Yeah, actually, that checks out. Yeah. We, should probably, we, should probably cut, we should probably cut it off right here. Was that the last person to go up? No, 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 because we had five more contestants. Oh, my God. But you so wheeled they, it in after that or what? Well, the, then five more contestants came up, and they all, like, did, uh, you know, like, they all had, like, a different... Like, Anal and fucking... No, no, no. They all just ate plates of food that were covered in butthole disorder. Okay. Well, we're not coming back here. That's going to be fine. <laughs> I mean, dude, I don't know. No, you dude. know what, though? At the end of the day, I think... I did, like, the kids did not see any body parts yeah. that they shouldn't have seen. No, you played it right, and that's why you're, you're, you're a pro on that front where you're, like, pushing the, the envelope and getting it to that line without going over is a delicate, like... You know, uh, situation. Yeah, I and mean, it was shoot their dare, bro. Yeah. No <laughs> one showed yeah. up to see, hey, do you have a crush on Emily? You don't? Well, yeah. fucking, fucking put that right. pickle, you know, squeeze the pickle juice in your eye. Nobody came for any weird. It came yeah. to see somebody blow somebody on hot sauce, whether they want to admit yeah. it or not. If a questionnaire yeah, was filled they, out. They, they had the gargle and the bob. Yeah, dude. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think I rented that in high school. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and dude, I'm just like, God, it was going so good. It was going You're so good. You're fine. You're and overthinking it. I hope so. Yeah, I, th I think you are. I think because at the end of the day, they want people, if people are having a good time, it's not something to talk about too, dude. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. why this is why the Kardashians hire people to follow them around. It's fucking buzz, dude. Stuff, stuff like that, people are now talking about nonstop. And then they're like... What goes better with a piece of goss and a piece of just fucking hearsay? A cocktail, dude. So back to the bar. Dude, they want... Because yeah. now you're feeling like, holy shit, dude, fucking... We, you, I just went to Steve O's through there. Dude, meet me at the fuck... <coughs> meet me at the fucking bar, dude. <laughs> I'm going to fucking tell you, dude. He made me fucking put hot sauce in my fucking bottle, dude. And we are yeah. getting fucked up now. Right. Yeah. Um, we, did get, we did get a very clear message from multiple people at the company that... Oh. Um, We'll say that next time. <laughs> yeah, but after the show. Oh, through email or face to face? No, I think from multiple sources. A restraining and, um, order. The, uh, the the butthole guy yeah. with the two fingers. Yeah. <laughs> you know the essayer. Not a fan. <laughs> um, 
He uh, he doesn't want the the footage the footage to go anywhere. Fine. Yeah. Blur he says uh, what he says uh, like he he works in some capacity with kids and the kids will just never let him hear the end of it. The story about him like <laughs> accidentally uh, you know entering door number two perfectly fine. <clears throat> but when the fingers go up the butt, nope. He does not want to have the kids. All right, it's a compromise. Yeah. So the story he's fine with. I know, but you can't. Like my have kids one. will respect me for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. The kids like like it. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So we just we just telling that story on the podcast, and there's, we're not going to reveal the identity of anybody. Great. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. And um, no, dude, kids were not exposed. There no private parts no. were exposed. You know to, what you're doing. I think so. Yeah. The um, the solo show was, so. was wild. It, now, riddle me this. Is it like when you get on these cruises, are you, what is the, what is the expectation from, because when you see fans, obviously there's always new people probably that are maybe not getting introduced. Well, yeah, getting introduced because there's so many fucking comics and entertainers, whatever. But like, if you meet someone that's like, I've been a fan, but I've never seen you live. Like, let's say they say that right before you go into a Truth or Dare show. Does that register? And you're like, fuck, man. Now I got to take... Like, the way Kobe used to say, and, uh, you know, like, there's always a new kid watching me. So I got to fucking dominate. I got to be the best because there's always a new kid mm. that paid money to come see me. Do you feel like that? Like, well, on whether it's a new fan or an old fan, like, I, I just I, I really don't like to waste people's time. Like, I'm... I'm uh, yeah. I, I, I describe myself as a hardcore attention whore. I believe that attention is the most valuable commodity known to man and that it should not be squandered. And so when you have someone's attention, like treat it as sacred, treat it as precious, yeah. respect it, you know, like uh, honor it. And the way that I honor it is by trying to make like, uh, you know, each moment compelling. Whether it's a truth or dare or a multimedia comedy show yeah. or a stunt or like whatever, just like my rule is don't waste people's time. Cool. Always been like that? Uh, I like to think so. Yeah. But yeah, dude, like, so the, um, I had no show and uh, I had to have a, an hour show, but I just put out a special and that, that tour's over. Yeah. I don't have my next tour ready. And I was just like, ah, and it forced me to put together an Gotta hour. say yes. Yeah, man. And you were there. And you did. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. I mean, I love you. You can't do wrong in my eyes. And also, like I was saying earlier, throwing darts is a big part of it. You just got to fucking be fearless and go and... You saying yes was a big deal. Whether that, whether this is, the sh and this won't even be the the end all show because you're just getting going with what right. this is. This will morph into what my next tour is. 1,000. But at some point you have to go, I need to start doing that. So right. what better way to go thrust yourself. Throw in, yourself into the fire. Any good TV writer talks about that when they're starting. I think I heard Seinfeld and Larry David talking about with Seinfeld how it was like the worst, writing the next episode was like the worst part because it was like looking at this blank page being like, fuck, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But yeah. like. Once you get that, you have to, something has to throw you into the fucking, uh, the mindset to, to go, I need to start doing it. So jumping out of a little bit of a uh, comfort zone, uh, yeah. like you did to go, all right, I'm going to, how much time did you have before this to, to at least put I something I always together? started like, uh, you know, like spitballing a, a, an outline, like I had an idea of what it was going to be. Yeah. We started like saying, okay, well, like, let's make a list of like different assets that yeah. we'll pull for the multimedia. And so you kind of have bullet points to like build the thing around. And then we'd figure out what order is it going to go in. Yeah. And then we like really like just kind of like uh, chop down the assets so that they don't waste any time. It's a great thing to go back and forth because you do have so much nostalgic footage. Like, and I'm sure you're scratching the surface. So to have commentary on it is never not fun. Mm -hmm. so I mean, truly, yeah. and uh, for me being a true fan, I mean, dude, you know what I'm like, saying? It's, it's like I'm at the age where I'm like, yeah, man, like I couldn't stop. Like every clip, I'm like, fucking great. And then to hear commentary on it, it could be just that. You could have nine different iterations of that show after I mean, this show. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. live in the past. Like this is kind of an interim placeholder totally. kind of totally. thing. Totally. But, uh, but yeah, man, and bro, you've been such a rad supporter of me and my comedy for so long and such a good friend. And, and dude, it, it means the world to me, You man. got it, bud. Do you have plans with the Dr. Phil? Are you going to evolve that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yes. It, it, the, the You know, it's like I've done it on Kill Tony twice. I've only done five of these shows at the Comedy Store. Just to the fifth one with, and, like, with Whitney and Nikki. I've only done five of these shows, but it was with Santino and Bobby. Yeah, it and then Divine with, like, and Rife Divine and, and Bill and Burr's doing it a second time next week because wow. he loved it so much. Burt Kreischer and Mark Norman are going to do it in May. Um, pretty close to some other fucking bangers that are just... 
you know, I got to a point to where it was like, I was doing like a once a month, you know, you did a, did a you know, bunch, an Adam Rain friend show, and I was like, yeah. mm -hmm. and I was oh, like, sure. I, I just. And dude, you've never paid me for one of them because like, you're like, oh, give me your Venmo. I'm like, what's that? Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> or did you? Oh yeah, a thousand oh, percent. Oh, well, I'm, I'm spot on with that. At one I, point I even <laughs> I, I like, came to another show you did and I gave you cash. I know oh, I've been spot on with that. Okay, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember. I just know that like. I I'll, just speak, that I'll speak to that, but I do know okay. that there's a buddy of mine that I started uh, doing shows with that took it over a little bit and I just put my name on it if he hasn't paid you then that's another I did, thing dude, dude, this but I know a, I'm good on that this was not an accusation this is what this well, was well it feels like it is Steve and I want to say that one thing I know no shut your fucking trap for a minute one thing I've noticed about you is you come on this ship okay you go I can drink my piss I can put my fingers in an asshole that I've just met but when it comes to remembering the truth <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the point Hold is, that thought. We'll be right back. Yeah, we'll be right back after the most recklessly generous offer that has ever been made to the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast. And it is for my cat people. If you own a cat, then this is for you. It is called Smalls. And we have never seen an offer so generous as 50% off your entire first order plus free shipping. And you know why they're that generous? It's because they know their product is that good. I mean, feeding your cat kibble in 2024 is not a good look. You want your cat to be healthy, you want it to live longer, you want it to be happier. So it's time to start feeding it real protein-packed, quality food and that's what smalls is all about and to get this 50 percent off your first order plus free shipping you go to smalls.com that's s-m-a-l-l-s dot com slash stevo and use the promo code stevo again for 50 percent off your first order plus free shipping i mean if you love your cats, you're going to do this for them, and they're going to love you for it. So one more time, smalls.com slash Stevo, and use the promo code Stevo, and let's get back to it. <laughs> the point I was trying, yeah, yeah. trying to make is that, that I've enjoyed doing your shows yes. so much yeah. that you don't even have to pay me. I really don't even I got you. No, I got you. And I, yeah. nah. well, it's. And, and the thing is that I just genuinely, I do know what Venmo is. Yeah. I do not, I've never, like, um, I know that. I've never seen it. Oh, I've yeah. never used it. I don't know how. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't, I would assume it's in the App Store. <laughs> like, I've just never looked for it. I've never looked for it in the App Store. Yeah. I've never it's, uh, it. it's actually the guy, Washy Washy, Smiley Smiley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's him. His name is Venmo. And so he shows up to your house with a check. No, I I want to do it more. I do, I'm going to do a few more Kill Tony like arena things. And then once oh a my month, God, dear, it's just it's fun Tony. as fuck. And it checks all the boxes for me that I think I've always liked doing and have maybe honed over the last few years, which is like, you know, I come out and do a monologue as Phil. So it's like a late night show, basically. So it's like I come out and do a monologue. Then I do. So there's some stand up there. I memorize that. Then I do some crowd work trying to get, you know, you know, the, the last one with Whitney and Nikki was uh, about creation, right? Uh, create, today's show is about creation. Whether is, that is, means, is Whitney just completely like about to She just her had water. her baby. I know, but this was before that or after? No, after. Oh, so this she, was her first show back since her special and so since she had a kid. like not even home from the hospital. She's already back on stage. No, I think the baby, the baby's been alive for two weeks, I think. Uh, okay. So then we just did this last week. All right. Yeah. And so they were down to, uh, to, to play, which helped a lot. And then, you know, the guest comes on and then there's uh, Jeremiah Watkins plays always like a different fake character. Mm -hmm. And then I had, there's this girl, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, that's been big in the news. Yeah. Uh, See, she's been very big in the news. So I got hit up by a friend that was like a Didn't friend of she mine. murdered her mom? Yes. Oh, yeah. Because sick. her mom put her through Munchausen syndrome, uh, which is making you think that you're like sick. sick. She she told her she had cancer. She's like, let's just save your head because it's back. You're going to lose your hair anyway. So she saved, told her she couldn't walk, told her she couldn't eat foods, put a breathing tube in her neck. What? She's like, yeah, it made me dude. breathe worse. And then all of a sudden she got out of the chair one day and she's like, oh, I can walk? Let me have a fucking Twinkie. I can have sugar? Realized her mom was bullshitting. And then her and this guy she was dating was like, yeah, I want to fucking fuck your mom and kill her. And she's like, we can just do one of those. And then, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, the, 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 the guy... <laughs> The guy did say that. I'm not putting words yeah, in his no, for sure. So he went, so he killed her. And then, but, you know, because of uh, Gypsy Rose's request, Gypsy Rose went to jail for, it's supposed to be 10 years, went to jail uh, for eight, got but out a month ago. she was just a, a model ago. citizen. 
got out a month ago. So my friend goes, I have a friend that auditioned to play her on the Hulu show that they came out. She looks and sounds just like her. So I set it up early in the show. And then I go, now, you know, being a, a, a woman is tough, right? Whitney? I mean, someone's either trying to kill you or fuck you. And my next guest <laughs> is someone who's dealt with both of those, but also just got out of jail and she's got a wild story. And I bring her out and 98% of the crowd the whole time thought it was her. And then afterwards, even people hit me up like, dude, how'd you get the real? I'm like, it wasn't. It was an impersonator. Wow. So that's like another fun element. Every show I try to have some other weird shit like that. Yeah. And then uh, Trevor Wallace came out and we had a period cramp simulator that myself oh and my Jeremiah God. and Trevor did and to kind of because, you know, they just going off of kind of uh, some of the baby birth stuff. So they're wild. So I want to do more of them. It's fun. I don't want to make it my identity, though. It's like I've been doing stand up 16 years. If what, you know, there's always, you never know what it is that gets people to come find other shit of yours or come to a show, but I'm not trying to like lean in so hard. If I was four or five years in the comedy, I probably would be, yeah, being like, I'm Larry the Cable Guy, baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's like, no, it's just another th fun thing. I mean, dude, it, 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 it's working. It's going great. Yeah. And, uh. It ended. Kudos to you. Do you have any other characters that you're working on? Oh, yeah, a bunch. Yeah. I'm going to go back to do Kill Tony in March. Um, I don't want to say what character because I think Tony likes to keep things under wraps. But, yeah, man, I got another character I'm going to kill. I mean, it's going to be so fucking, it's going to be wild, man. And, I mean, like, the one that, that, that this Jeremy character, this, like, nerdy, you know, camp counselor, fucking Dungeons and Dragons, pot smoking psycho that, that Steve-O popped on. I mean, dude, I, I could have done a fucking hour with I you. I had the best time that night. You I, and you I, were so quick, dude. And you, you again, you just yes and everything, and that that helps. But maybe also having some rapport helps. So I think you, as much as you were kind of like, what the fuck's happening? You kind of I could see that you were like, I trust where where, where you're gonna oh, take dude, this. Like, yeah, you, you were you killed it. Like my <laughs> set that night. That's like, on I YouTube, felt, by the way. Just type in. I, I remember, think dude, Jeremy I remember, Adam Ray. Yeah, I remember that night going into the com the comedy store main room, which is always like, wild, right? I, I walked in and Pete Holmes was slaughtering that room yeah. like the energy in there it was thunder yeah. they were laughing so beast. hard at pete holmes yeah and then uh like what was it eliza it was eliza and eliza then joe gatto from the jokers remember yeah, popped in for sure um and like it was just a murderer's row and just like the energy was insane and i was just like man i'd, I'd like I better go out here and like really up my game. Guns and I, I, don't, I don't know how, like, I just had like, they, they get, they, dude, it was the best <laughs> set. Like, no, yeah, just, you ripped, man. I was so, I was just so happy. And then you came out after and, and, uh, you did. <laughs> I, I enjoy doing your shows, man. Thanks, brother. And, um, like local spots in LA, like a lot of people will ask to do it. You totally. know, like, hey, dude, will you do my comedy yeah. show? And it's like, ah, I, I like got to be worth your time. You got to know like there's a fun factor involved, right? Like just yeah. going to do the spot sometimes isn't enough. And it's not that I'm like, you know, it's just like, ah, you know, it's just not always a good experience. And like, it's, uh, it's like, it's a lot, you know, let me ask you this guys. How have you dealt with the lack of channels? Now you seem like you got a nice celebrity setup in here. Have you watched Airplane 65 times in two days like I have? Twice. <laughs> have you watched, watched the Bow Channel? I watched Gil Yes, I have, and Gilligan's Island. <laughs> nice, dude. For those of you who haven't been on a ship, there's not a lot of entertainment in the room unless you've got toys and uh, and you've met some strangers who are looking to to fill their bodies up. Yeah, anybody who's on a cruise ship watching TV has a problem. And, and but if you're but at late night, if you're fucking whether it's an edible high or you're buzzing out, like I've had the last few nights, and I'm like, let me just see, can I go to bed to something? And it's airplane or if the bow a movie channel. To keep on loop, it is airplane. It is. 100%. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. When I uh, and, and dude, why why wouldn't they? Airplane was such a classic. Why wouldn't so they good. have cruise ship? I know. Wouldn't that be a great movie? It was not or boat trip. Wasn't there a with Cuba Gooding? Oh, did a movie know. called Boat Trip. But they should just make take the an exact format of the movie Airplane. Oh, you're saying they should remake ship. that? But, 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 yeah, oh, but that's not funny. Airplane. You can't it's do cruise the ship. same shit now that they did on there, though. Uh, okay, all right. Um, <laughs> back, back to Adam Ray. Ba back to back, back to, to Adam Ray. <laughs> I want to talk about your About Last Night podcast. Yeah, man. It was you and Brad Williams for the longest time. Yep. Brad Williams got married, had a kid. Yep. He's kind of like, uh, you know, gone a separate way. You've yep. been, you know, keeping the fires keeping burning the fires on your burning. own. Yep. Like, what's going on with the the Brad Williams relationship? How are you guys like? So I I auditioned for other dwarfs. I was like, <laughs> I want to find. I got to fill the uh, fill little the people. Void. Little people, yeah. 
by the way, there is a site, and Brad turned me out of this once uh, we really got close to rent little people for jobs. And I think I, the word is hire. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you rent objects. <laughs> you hire people. <laughs> the guy that I rented to play a, 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 a fucking Oompa Loompa in a Willy Wonka sketch, I did this like fake, this fake trailer for a sketch where Jeff Richards, comedian Jeff Richards, you know, was on SNL. Yeah. He does a great Gene Wilder. And it was a sketch that I came up with where it was Wonka doing stand up. And it was a fake movie trailer for Wonka doing stand up. And at the, at the uh, show, I wanted to have like Oompa Loompas there heckling him and being like, you never paid me, Wonka. You fucking owe me 60 grand. And Jeff being like, you know, we don't know where this is going. Whatever it was, he's firing back his Wonka. And this guy showed up in full Oompa Loompa garb and he was smoking a cigarette. He was hitting on the extras. And I think I gave him like 400 bucks. And then he hit me up later and was like, I lost the money. Can you send me another 400? And I was like... Fuck. And then, like, I hit up Brad, and I was like, Brad, the site you steered me to, he was like, yeah, I should have just gotten you one of my friends. I was like, yeah, I thought this guy was your friend. He's like, I don't fucking know that guy. I don't I don't go, I'm not on, and it was, it was, and why I said rent, it was rent, I think rentanlp.com was the name of the site. Okay. We can Google it. Um, um, but Brad is a great dude. He could be under the bed, so let's... Uh, yeah. Side uh, note, um, I'm personally offended that Hugh Grant is playing in the Oompa Loompa, right? That's like, so fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it's totally... Brad's totally a great weird. actor. Hugh Grant is Hugh Grant, but like... Oh, yeah. yeah. And Brad has famously spoken on many of uh, occasions how the Why CGI, would they do that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, dude. It's completely wrong. It's but, wild, uh, yeah. But, but also, he, have you not seen Brad, like, dance? Or, like, there's a video yeah. on YouTube. The first time I saw oh, Brad dance. God. It's called Dwarf Dances Gangnam Style. And we were at his place in Brea. He used to live in Brea. <laughs> you know, he's from Fullerton. And post-show, 4 or 5 a.m., we're hanging out there. There's swingers. That's the first time I met a swinger. And, and she's like, you want to come fuck me in the shower? And the guy was like, hey, it's cool. I'm her husband. I'll, as long as I can watch. I was like, this is going to be a hard pass, but hit me up on <laughs> Xbox. A little person swinger party? Uh, no, it was a, a regular person. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and I always say that because Brad calls us normies, uh, famously. Brad says, or what does he say now when he, he, um, he, you know, he married his wife? He's like, ha ha, I got one of yours. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so we're at his uh, house and all of a sudden Gangnam Style Hammer remix comes on and Brad just starts dancing. And I was like, wait a second. I've never, I've been friends with him for three years at this point. I was like, never seen him dance. And I go, what the fuck? And then he was like doing all this choreography and I go, do you have choreography to this? And he goes, maybe. And I go, restart the song, grab me my phone. I tape the whole thing. I'm high as balls. So there's this five minute video on YouTube. I mean, it's got almost a, a million views at this point and, and it's Brad dancing brilliantly. I mean, the guy can fucking move and I'm just giggling over it. It's incredible. I mean, he's a swift guy, man. And a great guy and a great guy. Why is his background dancing? Or he just his fucking- His background is chocolate making, but his- <laughs> <laughs> But we'll be right back. No, his, yeah, his Jesus, dude. No, he, he, I mean, he was a DJ. He said at one point, DJ Fourfoot was his DJ name. Uh, I mean, I think he was in musicals. So, I mean, but he's just uh, another great example of a guy that just is like anything for the bit, dude. So as soon yeah. as I was like, he saw how hard it was making me laugh, he fucking leaned hard into it and danced up a storm. But he actually is a really fucking, can move and shake. But yeah, dude, we're still best buds. And he just wanted to, he heard some older comics say when they had kids, how much they missed being around their kid. And he is on the road nonstop. So he's like, when I'm home, I just want to be home. And so I was like, I can't argue with that. We did 10 years, 500 episodes. Um, and definitely a challenge to do it solo now. I'm now leaning into more like just me solo episodes because I've done the guest thing for so long. And and it is nice to kind of have people, you know, flex that muscle of just trying to like be entertaining myself for 40 uh, to an hour. And, um, and uh, but I do miss, like this is obviously the most fun, having yeah. people to bounce off of. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to uh, swindle them back into doing it with, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, here, you know, want, want, want to bite of this, you know? Objectively, the podcast was like crushing more with you and Brad. 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1,000%. And I'm getting a new following from some of this Dr. Phil shit that's finding it, which is cool. But um, it also was, again, it just goes back to the fun part, man. It's like having him to bounce off of. Yeah. A lot of times he's, we wouldn't even. He's really quick and hilarious. Totally. Too. And we would come in with like, with bits you know, unbeknownst to the other person and kind of slyly try to work them out on each other and then tag each other's shit. But we always were living lives worth writing about. So we always had shit to talk about. Did you guys live together in that apartment? 
He lives your in apartment. So he lived in the cabinet of the kitchen, and then there was. <laughs> okay, I'm just being honest. But so uh, no, and, no, he lived. He lived in Fullerton, and then he moved to Hollywood, and then we were both about five minutes from each other for a while. Okay, and then he moved uh, to the valley, and now uh, so he's back in the woods. What came first, Brad departing your podcast? Yeah. Or your podcast going to cast media. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know where I'm going. Yeah, dude. Hey, shout out to cast media. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, that's the guy that CoffeeZilla did a thing on? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the, so guy. That, that's the guy that Theo Vaughn did a thing on. That's yeah. The yeah, Theo's like, yeah, this, the guy. I mean, dude. I have the best story here. Bro, that was wild. Uh, yeah, you came to do the show there twice, I think. I, I went to do the show there. You probably met that guy. Oh, not only did I meet that guy, but before I, I put out the Wild Ride podcast, at the point where we had recorded with Tony Hanlock, with Dr. Drew, and with Burt Kreischer. Wow. But we had, those, those were our first three episodes. They were banked, but they had not been released yet. And, and we were figuring out um, how to release it. Do we want to be with the network? Do we want to go with my buddy who just sells the podcast ads? Like, how, like what's going to be our business relationship around this podcast? So I took meetings at all different places. I went to cast media. And the guy with like the frosty... Frosty hair. tips. Frosty tip Colin. Should be a red flag, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I had frosty tips. I had frosty tips in seventh and maybe half of eighth grade, a little bit of tenth, and had definitely enough people be like, eh, Abercrombie and Fitch is on the way out, dude. Yeah. You know? so yeah. And you don't have the body to wear those clothes. And and uh, frosty tips like totally late. Remember, like we got to yeah. The, we, oh, we, and we, late with yeah, the tips. We, yeah, yeah. Frosty tips. You got to totally, be on time with I tips. I think he was. I don't want to. I don't want to defame anybody. We're going to be factual. I think he was late. And and so it's then, a power move, and it, it feels right. Right. So so then, uh, and and I'm with Scott. Mm -hmm. I'm with Scott, and and like we go into his boardroom. We walk into the, you know in there and. Um, Frosty Tips tells me that he uh, he thinks there's a lot of potential for uh, my Wild Ride podcast, that he'd love to have us um, at Cast Media, and uh, that he'd like to uh, formally offer me a 50-50 split. <laughs> and I was mm -hmm. just like, wait a second, because at this point I had done enough. Um, Episodes like, were out. No, 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 no. no. We, we did enough like, research we, on people to like who to go after, you yeah, know. And, and and episodes were not out. We were figuring out who to who to go with. But to your put audience them out. is apparent, so it's like right. to go. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'd love to right. let you split your money with me. Yeah, You're like well, what? right. And, and and we had already had enough conversations yes. to know that what's like, possible. That like I mean seventy thirty, like is 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 a tough one. Oh yeah, you know, seventy five twenty five is like maybe like eighty twenty like, and and this guy's saying fifty fifty, and I was just like, what did I say to the guy? I was like, I was like, um, I mean, I, I maybe, don't, like maybe like, like let, let me just let me like think it. about it, you know? Or I, I don't remember. I don't the, think I was rude. I don't think I was rude, but I like I ended the meeting like reasonably quickly. I was just like, wow, the fact that that guy just off. Uh, you know, meaning like, and he was late. I mean, what's a podcast based on? It's based on like, like the like having an audience, yep. like producing the, the like the, the the content. You know, like finding the guests, like doing like you you have to like kind of bring all that. Mm -hmm. And then what what do they do? Like they're like, uh, oh, we're gonna slap some ads on it. You know, like bro, yeah. So I mean that that's not nothing, but it's definitely not fifty percent. No, you got to earn your value and prove your worth. Yeah, and, uh, and so it and was, he wasn't paying people, right? I mean that well, didn't right, even come I mean, out yet. Yeah, that this was way, way, way before that. We've been doing the podcast for four years now, so this was four years. Ago. So did he reach out to you after your appearance on about last night uh, at Cast Media when I was Can't there? Remember? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, because you probably, I mean, you probably hadn't. You, you, I, I definitely just, remember you walking in and being like, oh, what's this new set? So it was new. So yeah, it was probably it after was, that. It was the same, I think it was the same floor in the same building. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is where that kook tried to offer me the worst deal that I've ever like. <laughs> oh, shit. Had, you know, and it was, thank God it was such a no brainer to just end the meeting and leave his office and just kind of laugh about like, wow, that was like. What a ballsy that, move. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like, what, what if he said 80 20? Like, like I would have been, I would have been at cast and I never would have been paid. <laughs> Like everybody else.
but you got out before like I, that's such a wild to offer that that's like a, a prostitute being like so I've got gonorrhea herpes and it's <laughs> and it's yeah. but I'm gonna let you fuck me without a condom cause but, but, I'm a nice girl he was doing it to so many people that it was probably working for him for a while he's like oh dude I'm killing it taking advantage and then it started catching up when he couldn't pay his bills yeah and then he couldn't pay. That and then the up. stories started coming out on him. And, and God bless Theo for going hard in the paint, man. It yeah. takes one guy to just step up that's respected and reputable to really be like, this is what it is. You know, my, well, yeah, I had a principal as a raccoon, but like this guy ain't this guy ain't kosher. But, you know, whatever he said was <laughs> fucking right. honest and like yeah. and, and and poignant and like and and uh, valid. And, it's like, and, dude, and, you yeah. can't be doing people gotta be called out for for asinine behavior like that how many people weren't speaking up i had whitney tell me like oh dude like uh you know here's the thing like uh i haven't gotten paid for my podcast like in like months and months yeah, like the wild. tune of like i don't know if she ever went public Brendan but, Schaub went public on his yeah. talk about this. so he had all those people while I they're mean, in their dude, prime how many people got screwed by frosty tips oh yeah whitney theo and i was fighter just, and the kid totally and i was trying to find my you know new direction uh kind of rebranding it. So I was in a place where I was like a little more like, all right, new spot, like not trying to ruffle feathers, but definitely suspicious, you know, like being like, what the, like, why, why is he paying me in fucking high fives and monopoly money? You know, like he's like, I'm good for it. I'm good for it. You know, he was paying me with just eight inches of shaft all the way to the balls. <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know. Like, he, he never, <laughs> never, never even, he never even got that far. You know, yeah, like dude. it didn't happen. That's a part of this business too, that you, that, it's like there's no rule book for it, right? It's like as you get going, you just were you always business savvy? Like once you got no. like No, yeah. It takes oh, a God beat to no. figure that out, right? Yeah, like God knows. Starting this pod probably added to the you being more self aware of just like really running your shit. I think yeah. that the doing this podcast has like led to a greater self awareness and gradually, bit by bit. Yeah. Like uh, I've been improving as a person. I think we, we see it. We switched like accounting t firms. <laughs> What's so funny, man? <laughs> yeah, what, <laughs> the edibles oh, just yeah, kicking. Eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, got, you got some stories that might combat that piece of information. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think also like because like we're starting to look at like profit and loss statements hot sauce butthole footage. <laughs> and like looking at the profit and loss statements every month yeah. really like you're like oh fuck because like the numbers do not lie. Yeah, you can't sell somebody a dream. But if you like, so, some guy reached out to me the other day said, "Hey, uh, w are you interested in investing in my business?" And I was like, "Can you send me over your profit and loss statement?" And then he gave me a story. But it's like you can. He didn't send me the statement, but like if he would have sent me that, you could tell what's going on with the business. Mm. You know, and yeah. if your business is doing good, you have nothing to hide. But like once you start looking at the business side of it, you know, yeah. then you can't get fucked with. Yeah, the facts don't lie, right? Yeah. The numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. And I've said that my whole life. The numbers <laughs> don't lie. You could go to Mc McDonald's, Scott. You could order a hot coffee and go, well, there was some uh, uh, drunk bitch in Rancho <laughs> Cucamonga who sued Mickey D's in 1998 for spilling the hot coffee on her twat. And I only say that because that's what I read on Google. But my point is... Don't go back to McDonald's if you don't like their coffee because the facts and the taste don't lie. What is it, ba up up I'm loving it. <laughs> do that back. Dr. Phil, are you going to have the uh, Catch Me Outside girl back on? Well, again? I'm looking to. The baby, I think is her name. Uh, <laughs> bad, bad Bobby. Oh, bad, bad Bobby. Baby. Wait, Bad Bunny? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I forget. This could be the hardest he's I've had, had a lot of <laughs> I've had a lot of guests on. I've had on between Oprah and and I've had on, you know, uh David Spade lookalikes. I've had on a hermaphrodite who could juggle. So we're spanning the gamut, Scott, but the bad baby uh, came in hot. I think she just made forty five million on OnlyFans last year. Uh, dancing or doing some butt twerks, but she's got a lot of tricks up her sleeve, but she's got a lot of sleeves up her trick. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm trying to, what I'm interested in, Scott, is not just how you put your shirt on, okay? But do you go, do you put your pants on first? <laughs> if, you yeah. can, if you can fuck through a, look, sometimes I'll do, you ever do the finger dick trick? You're at a party and the vibes are low and the hors d'oeuvres are, are sparse. You pull down your zipper, you put your index finger through it and you go, hey, look, here's a cock. <laughs> and someone goes, wait, that's a finger. And you go, is it? We'll be right back. But you keep it right here. You let them go because it's their house and now you're the, the king of the kingdom. But my point is, yeah, she's a, she's a, she's a bad baby. She's a bad baby. 
Hey, I got she's a, a music. She's an artist now. Dr. Phil. Please. Um, can you uh, explain to us or, or just um, tell us what it was like? Those are the to, same things, yeah. To have had <laughs> Bam Margera reach out to you for help mm. and come to you in such shambles and then just leave you so perfectly fixed. How did you fix Bam Margera forever? Well, I love to look at a guy, and I appreciate you asking that, Stephen. Bam is a guy that came in with a plan, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he called it the Bam plan. Yeah. And I made, a, I made him write it down in a journal. Uh, and I actually, I lived with him for about two weeks. I slept in his hot tub. He slept, he slept in a water bed next to me, and I would read to him every night journals that I wrote as him and he would read them out loud. And eventually we got into a fight and he asked me to leave. But I said, before I leave here, I want you to look in the mirror and say, do I give a fuck? And at that point I was, you know, he had hit me pretty hard. I was bleeding on the sidewalk, but, (laughs) but I do remember that, uh, we played a game of grand theft auto. And I said, if you could be any of these hookers, who would you want to (laughs) be? And his answer blew my mind, and I said, this guy's on the, on the path to recovery, but also the path to discovery. Yeah. <laughs> because, look, you can go to a Taco Bell KFC combo and ask them, hey, is this a brothel? And they might not tell you, but once that guy gives you a chalupa and then also says, I'll suck your dick for a dollar, you know what you're working with. <laughs> my point is, global warming, it's probably real, okay? Yeah. But, you know, we're also... The pandas at the zoo, Steve, they don't want to be there. (laughs) Bam wanted to be there. Bam wanted to be there. And where's there? Here. Living life to the fullest. We'll be right back. (laughs) All right. Can can you explain to us what soaking is, what the Mormons do? Sure. So what they're doing, (laughs) what soaking is... Yeah, why? Well, I don't, for the people that don't know what it is, what can you explain? Well, boredom, why did we start with this? Boredom, <laughs> boredom is real. Boredom is real. Yeah, and, and I've got a lot of Mormon friends. I don't keep in touch with them, but I follow them on Facebook, and they're always putting up a social media facade. Okay, you know, just I don't do this. I don't subscribe to that. But then, yeah, they'll soak. They'll do a little dick uh, dip, right, as I like to call it, a little a little just feeling it out, just a little, hey, what's it like to go? You ever just walk up to, like, a hotel pool and you go, I wonder if it's if they heat the pool or not. And you put your toe in. You put your toe in. Well, you know, and sometimes if you're feeling real frisky, if it's a Holiday Inn Express, you put your whole cock in it. <laughs> if you know the manager, shout out to Ramon. But I do think there's a time and a place for soaking. I don't do it myself because I'm an all in guy. Okay. I want to, I want to be there, look around. You know, if I, if I do an escape room, I don't do just one room. I'm going to do the whole experience. So soaking is a little out of my realm of, of what's truly fun. Now, what is it exactly? I don't know what soaking is, Scott. What was the question? <laughs> From what I've heard, it's like, do you know what it is? Like, like yeah. you'll lay on, to get, explain it. So uh, they wear a condom and they no, and no, pants no, as well. No, they well, just, fucking the, tell me the, what the, it the is. The penis inserts into the vagina, but they don't do the humping motion. They just soak. They just sit there. They just sit there and soak. A friend shaking the bed so it's not that humping. Wait, so it's like just putting a sandwich in your mouth but not chewing it. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah. Paul, you've probably heard this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you got it. But does somebody shake the bed while they're inside? I, no, I've never now, heard that. Now, here's no, no, my no, question. Hold, hold on, hold that thought. I'm sorry, that was not an interruption. I mean, I'm, I'm calling in the gorgeous Paul, Paul Brisky. Oh, okay. You're going to soak? Come on in, Paul. <laughs> Paul, good to see you. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for having me. Now, I've been a bit, I'm a, a long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, I, I loved your work uh, in sa- Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think you were uh, one of those. That, you were that. What was your line in that movie again? I said, "Look out!" Right, they're coming. Here, they're coming. And by they, you meant the Mormons. Right, exactly. And so, soaking mm-hmm. was created by Mormons, but it's been it's been continued by the Japanese. The Japanese. That well, yeah. you read my book, so <laughs> <laughs> called soaking with the Japanese. Yeah, but I still don't know. If, <laughs> I still, <laughs> I still don't know what it is. Can you break it down for the audience at home? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Can we look it up while you're looking? Why don't we look it up and we'll compare notes? You put the dick in and you just you just leave leave it it there. Yeah, you You leave leave it it there and you pray. It's the set it and forget it mindset. You pray. 
No, you shake the bed. You shake you the bed. Shake <laughs> the bed. <laughs> Paul, I, I got to side with Scott on this. I think someone's shaking the bed. You have to shake the bed. If you don't shake the bed, it's not a soak. You're or not, that's just like because if you're you not have humping. a friend who's. <laughs> but if, okay, get now in who now who shakes the bed? Is it someone you trust? Here, Steve, take yeah. my spot. And or is, is that a, a threesome? <laughs> if you don't I, know the person, I, I, is it a bukkake? <laughs> well, let me shake the couch. <laughs> How hard do you have to shake it? Okay. I will tell you right now. Uh, let me look it up. Okay, you look that up, and, and uh, Adam Ray. No, I love the, you. The, no more nonsense. Yeah. Tell us about being in Barbie. Barbie was cool, man. It was a it was a nice three minute scene that got chopped down to uh, a couple, maybe two and a half lines. But you know what? As my uh, sweet seventy five year old mother said, you know, I wasn't in Barbie to make me feel better. Uh, it was. <laughs> It was fun to, to do, again, I just chalk things up to the experience at this point. I went to a midnight screening, fully uh, feeling that I'm going to have a, a nice chunk of a, a... Oh, they a, didn't tell you. Huh? Oh, no. And so I'm sitting there with my wife and a couple other homies. I pop on screen. I go, here we go. Two seconds go by and I go, and there it was. <laughs> but, you know, you just go, all right, man, got to be a part of something that was cool. <laughs> but the experience was awesome. Margot Robbie was the shit. Gosling, I don't think he fucking blinked the whole 10 minutes I talked to him in between takes. The guy is fucking everything. I mean, just a fuck. Like, dude, I was almost condescendingly supportive where he was like, dude, so you do comedy? I was like, yeah, man, been doing about 15 years. He's like, dude, that fucking, that's awesome, dude. It's good for you, man. And he's like, do they feed you at the clubs? I'm like, yeah, man, they'll give you like, uh, you know, they'll give you like, you know, chicken fingers and salad. He's like, dude, I fucking love chicken fingers, man. <laughs> He's like, do you know what soaking is? I was like, no, I don't, man. I don't but my friend Paul knows. He, can, he wrote, wrote a book He's on like, it. You ever need me to shake the bed? Yeah, I got you. Me, yeah, I'm a great bed shaker, man. <laughs> Boy, shake it with vigor. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so dude. it was cool as fuck. Your man. filmography is off the charts, dude. You're got to be like, a lot of cool shit. You had the Ghostbusters, yeah. the Barbie. Like, uh, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Like, Curb was fun. Larry, that's my favorite show. I was in a show called Hacks for a bit. Played oh, Jay yeah. Leno on Pam and Tommy, the, the Pam and Tommy uh, sex oh, tape show. Right, oh, I yeah. It put me in four hours of makeup. Up and Dude, it was, we loved, yes. loved, loved Pam and Tommy. Was it good? Yeah. It was I mean, Lily good. James, unbelievable. Fucking uh, the, the dude, uh, Tom, Sebastian Stan. Rogan crushed it. And it's like, I'd always kind of done a loose Leno. And then I was like, they, once they put all the fuck four hours of the full face, chin, everything. And then it just made it so easy to be like, so Paula, so how long you had a, so your cock is a, it's four inches, right? That's true. That right? And Kevin, you remember Paul got a four inch cock. Hey, so Jay, <laughs> Jay, yeah, Jay please. can you tell me what's the beef with Howard's turn? Well, so I, uh, I, I mean, uh, see what the, uh, the beef was, uh, oh, it goes way back. It's going, obviously, I've been uh, doing Santa for a while. And Howard, Howard's a great guy. Howard's, Howard's one of those guys that, uh, <laughs> And I, you know, I mean, look, they're soaking, and then there's, yeah. uh, they're going all the way in. So yeah, it, well, Howard did a soaking bit, and you just stole it, and he got upset about that. Well, you know, it's a common thought, right? So it's like I used to do a lot of OJ jokes, right? You know, remember OJ? Remember OJ? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hear about this? You hear about this? Yeah. I, I used to do a joke, uh, Stephen. It was, uh, I do a joke. It was, uh, I come out and do a, a monologue joke, right? I go, uh, oh, here's something new. You hear about this? Apparently, uh, uh, 42% of women enjoy sex after uh, 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 dessert after dinner, right? Uh, sex after dinner. Uh, I forget the fucking joke, but it was <laughs> something about <laughs> it was something about dogs. Oh, oh, 72% of dogs uh, like to uh, uh, try to eat their own pussies uh, during the day. 72% percent you're about this uh <laughs> 70 percent of dogs like to eat their own pussies yeah all right and then i would go well i guess all dogs do go to heaven we got a great show the google dolls are here and then i would go into the uh, plug for the show but you know it's, it's all common thoughts even i don't know dude fantastic yeah. man god I, I love you dude. i love you too man. uh how long have you been married about a year unbelievable yeah she's the best she's here on this cruise so uh, uh like your girl man just so fully supportive but it's got her own thing, but it has forced me to step back and not be so, you know, I'm just grinding so much to try to, you know, keep this moving and, and, and keep doing cool. Get to a point to where I fucking get asked to be on a pod that I'm a fucking big fan of. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, that, that's, that's the cool shit, man. And, uh, and she, like, you know, she she came to, uh, uh, I mean, we were dying a lot. What's cool is that when you have similar sensibilities, she's, you know, not a prude, but she's just got, she's gotten so much more into this world that she's got her own flavors now. Big fan, we're watching the show, dying together watching your show is so cool. And then she watches me on uh, the podcast, on, on uh, Brian Quinn's uh, podcast last night, and she comes up me quoting all these funny things that happened. And, you know, it's also a thing, too, where it helps you to kind of, stay creative and stay fresh to where it's like she loves to come to all the shows and she loves to hang but like uh it definitely makes me go well i don't want her to see all the same shit you know so doing crowd work during the set always helps that but i'm always 
we talked about something that happened on the ship and then I was like, oh, I'm going to do this uh, bit. I did this dumb bit where I was like, I kept hearing these little eavesdrop moments on the ship. And I was like, I'm going to do that tonight. And she's like, that's pretty funny. And I did it and it crushed and it was, and she was like, oh, I'm so glad you did it. Blah, blah, blah. Mean, like what's an eavesdrop moment? So, so I said like, I go, I've been on this ship. It's my first time on the Joker's cruise. And I go, I love these cruises. Cause after about a 48 hours, there's so many things you hear. We're on all such close proximity that everyone's coming from different walks of life. And whether they've been on their fifth cruise or their first, it's just, it's a, it's overwhelming, you know, just what we're soaking up. So I want to read you guys a couple of the sound bites I've heard on this Impractical joker's cruise thus far uh first thing is what i heard uh, i heard a guy say uh hey i i paid that guy 60 bucks to uh to uh, i paid my wife 60 bucks to show this guy um her tits so that he would uh, give us the wi-fi code is what i heard on day one um just walking down the stairs just like oh, yeah i paid him my wife showed the tits to get the wi-fi code i was like i'm gonna write that down then i heard another guy at the buffet go yeah dude that girl's so hot i can't tell if she's half asian or fully asian shots <laughs> <laughs> And then the third thing I heard was, man, we ain't shit, man. You fucking fall off this ship. You fall into the fucking ocean. You fucking fade away into oblivion. That moon's going to light your fucking death, dude. You ain't shit. No one finds you. Dude, say goodbye to your family because once you fall into that water, it's up to the creatures, man, to see what happens to your body. And that was me on Edibles talking to myself in the mirror about an hour ago. <laughs> and so, you know, just, the, you know, whatever. But it was, uh, she's just so, like, you know, like, go for it and, like, take chances but also it's made me step back and go like, all right, I got to like, you know, be a person too and like yeah. hang out and not and have nights where I'm not doing shows or like, you know, making time for dinners on the ship with her and not just being like, I got to like do every show or go, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It's a great balance, but she rules. Dude, that's epic, yeah. man. <clears throat> that's epic, dude. <clears throat> Gorgeous Paul Brisky, Skinny Vinny. We uh, what, what, what do you got here? Dude, like, I got uh, nothing else. Been been I, I've, been, I've been laughing so fucking hard. I t I, when we first met, I yeah, told you bro. I was a big fan. Yeah, man, I appreciate so, that. So uh, yeah, dude, it's, it's, it has been rad. We might that. have set a record for the hardest laughs yeah. on the Wild Let's Ride podcast. Go, dude. Dude. Let's yeah. go, I honestly, dude, be honored to be here, man. You know, dude, I, I love it, like, man. I love it too. Like Scotty, I love dude, it. I yeah. love you. You guys are crushing it too, man. Let me know. Guest rule that fucking flows good. People are pumped to be on it. People are pumped to support the the endeavors. Thank you so much, man. Uh, what, like, what can we uh, point point people to? Big heavy tour uh, called the Dog Dad Tour, uh, 2024. I mean, pretty much every week I'm on the road. Uh, AdamRayComedy.com for tickets. About last night is the podcast. Dr. Phil Live happens once a month at the Comedy Store, so just uh, check ComedyStore.com for that. But follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Adam Ray Comedy. I post all the shit there. Um, fuck, man, shop my special. Just getting ready to shop it, so we'll yeah, see where that pops dude. off. Um, and then... Uh, and then I think that's it for now. Fucking go see me do two lines in Barbie. I don't know. Uh, tell Gosling <laughs> to do the Dr. Phil show. Um, that would be cool. That would be a dream guest. Damn. Although he's also so serious. So I don't know. Like you definitely, again, like need people like yourself that are like, can just wrap that. But also he's such a good actor. So maybe he would be like, is it cool if I act like you're really Dr. Phil? And I'm like, well, yeah, that would be great. Because it would be shitty if you went out there talking to me as Adam. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. He's yeah. funny though. I bet he would be good. Like totally. Yeah. There's, yeah I mean, you see him on, on SNL. He's pretty game yeah. for it. Is there a dream guest for this show? Like somebody that yeah. you're not. That's not even like, like a. I don't know. I'm like Bob a Tom, Weir. Bob Weir, Ozzy. Let's go. Uh, Ozzy would be a big one for me. Ozzy, all right. Yeah. Still but, dying to get Snoop. That's gotta happen. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. All right, all right, I love you, brother, man. I love you, dude. Brother, thanks, man. What a trip. Yeah, what a trip. So thanks, funny. Paul. Yeah, man. Thanks, shit. brother. I'll take a bump. Yeah, I love you, bud. All right. So let, let, let's hear it. How hard were you laughing while listening to that episode? I want to hear it. I want, I want Adam Ray to hear it. So let's do the street team thing, guys. Let's grab a screenshot of the episode, post it on your socials, tag Adam Ray, tag me, and let him hear it. Let him hear how hilarious he was, man. Because, uh, man, I really enjoyed that, and uh, I want him to feel the love. And I hope you feel my love, you wonderful people who stick around to the end of the podcast. Man, I love you. So have a good one. Yeah, dude.